Good afternoon. My name is Jonathan Fox. I'm a graduate student at UGA in the Crop and Soil Science Department. And today I'm going to talk about how we're going to use macroinvertebrates as indicators of septic system density. So these are my co-authors and committee members. We have Dr. Gary Hawkins, a water resource specialist at UGA. Dr. Daryl Botzer, he's an entomologist at UGA. And Dr. Dory Franklin, she's an associate professor at the Crop and Soil Science Department. So how it's gonna to work today, I'm gonna to start off with a quick introduction and a little bit about my research objectives. Then we'll dive right in into the creek selection and the locations of the different watersheds that I selected. Uh, we'll talk about the results, uh, we'll discuss them and conclude a little bit. And then we'll end with questions if there's time. So this is an image of the Mulberry River watershed. This is where all the creeks that I looked at are located. Up in the left-hand corner up there, the top left, we have Lake Lanier and in the bottom right hand corner is Athens. So you get a size of the scale. This watershed spans through both Barrow, Jackson and Hall counties. And the red diamonds on the screen are the locations of the creeks and where I took both water and macroinvertebrate samples. So the sampling history of the Mulberry River is pretty unique. It dates back to 1998 and Cedar, Indian, Rocky, uh, those are all creeks that are in my watershed, and they've been sampled for a various amount of things. However, none of them have ever been sampled for macroinvertebrates. However, the two creeks that are outside of the watershed that I included are on the Upper Oconee watershed network, and they have been monitored for both water and macroinvertebrate samples, and those are Little Bear and No Catchy Creeks. I chose them because they offer a similar range of septic tank density and they are close to access and they're about the same size as some of the other creeks that I chose. So I thought they would be excellent additions to the study. So my objectives for this study are to determine if septic tank density has an effect on the water quality in the watershed and also to determine if septic tank density has an effect on macroinvertebrate assemblage. So we'll dive into the Mulberry River Watershed Management Plan. This plan was drafted in 2018 as a document to assist the stakeholders in deciding what needs to be done around the watershed. And as you can see by the map, the land use is extremely diverse. It's about 37% ag forestry and 37% residential with the rest of industrial and municipal lands making up the rest. So it's, it's very diverse, uh, a lot of different colors on that map for sure. On-site sewage management systems, the septic tanks in this watershed. The report states that while the uh, geographic areas are great, uh, really good soils in this area for using septic tanks, uh, periodic individual problems do occur. And that, that is expected. However, the most likely sources of contamination will be from sewers or agricultural runoff, stormwater runoff, wastewater treatment plants, and sometimes individual septic system failure. So that's that last part's really what we're interested in for this study. So the creeks that we selected, they're all first order streams and they range from about 2,500 to over 5,000 acres. So they're a good range of size. The uh, sampling that I did all occurred off of main roads with bridges or large drain culverts, just to have the same amount of traffic, oil, you know, Zaxby's cups, inputs on all the different creeks. Everyone's about the same pollution. Sampling occurred at locations that were downstream from areas of high septic density, sewer lines, or the wastewater treatment facilities. So everything's downstream. The way I grouped these was they're either no septic tank density, which is meaning that they would be on sewers or located in sewer cities or downstream from sewer cities like Curry and Indian Creek are. Rocky and Little Bear are low septic tank density creeks. They're probably in the most rural areas, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Then the medium density creeks are half rural, half residential. Some of them flow through neighborhoods, some of them flow right behind big neighborhoods. And then our high septic tank density creeks are the ones that we know flow through multiple neighborhoods or are located right outside of large cities like No Catchy Creek outside of downtown Athens, and even Cedar Creek, which is located downstream of a massive wastewater treatment plant. So it definitely receives additional influence. Our water sampling, we did this twice monthly for each of the eight streams. And we took these samples back to our lab to analyze for TKN and phosphorus. And then the rest of them were sent to the UGA CAS water lab for other minerals, pH, alkalinity, hardness, the whole battery of tests. Our macroinvertebrate samples, we did uh, eight creeks quarterly. 
and we used these modified sampling procedures from other papers, but we collected them using standard DNets. After they co were collected, they were identified to the lowest possible taxonomic level and then preserved so that they could later be put into the metrics. And I used three different metrics for this um, experiment. I used the ephemeroptera, plecoptera, tricoptera metric, uh, mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, very standard, Hills and Hoffs biotic metric, and Margalef's diversity index. I also use this index, the septic tank density index, which gives you a value of septic weight. And the way that is determined is you count the individual units in each watershed. I did this using web soil survey. And then you calculate the distance from the mouth of the creek to the sampling location where you got the water. And that was all factored into this equation. There is that equation. And what that septic weight J right there gives you the numbers on the left-hand side. So these are our septic tank index values for each of the eight creeks. Taking these values, I then did some population covariance correlations with the three um, parameters of the water testing that stood out the most, which were silicon, nitrate, and conductivity. And these values were correlated with the septic tank density values to give me these numbers here, these population covariance values. And as you can see, we actually have two positive correlations here. So what that's saying for nitrate and conductivity is as the septic tank density index will increase, so are your nitrates and conductivity. So that basically is saying that the septic tanks, as they get more, more dense and more numbers of them, they are making the water slightly more polluted. And like I said, the reason we chose those because those showed the most variability when I did the water testing. And the highest levels of the nitrates actually occurred in the high septic tank density and the wastewater treatment plant creeks um, like Cedar Creek. Now Rocky Creek, was one of our low septic tank density creeks, but it had the highest level of nitrates for a creek that was supposed to be pretty clean. And that, really, that one really surprised us. In addition, these increases in nitrates were seen at all the creeks during the onset of the COVID-19 quarantine as more people started to use the restroom at home instead of at work or at school. So it saw a lot more additional input during those first few months. But overall, water quality tended to trend with nutrient loads and, you know, the highest had the high numbers of nitrates and, and bad water quality and then the medium and the sewer creeks were, you know, a little bit higher than that Then the low density creeks were pretty clean. So these are my macro invertebrate averages. These are all of the metrics that I used and this uh, are an average of all the sampling events that took place from about late March to late November of 2020. And as you can see, pretty solid numbers on the EPT. Uh, Hilsenhoff is pretty good. Curry Creek right there, the one that flows through downtown Seward Jefferson was always the nastiest and therefore had the like kind of the worst average numbers for that. And the, the bottom number is really what gets me this diversity, uh, such low richness for each of these creeks and especially some of the more polluted creeks. Cedar Creek, the wastewater treatment plant creek had some of the worst diversity I've ever seen. It was pretty bad. So I took those numbers, the HBI, the EPT, and the Margolef averages, and I did the same thing that I did with the water quality numbers. I did population covariance correlations with the septic tank density index values. And as you can see, we have two negative correlations here, which is kind of interesting. And I like these bottom two with EPT going up as septic tank in, uh, index goes up, which makes sense that Margolef would be going down. So as more as those three species tend to dominate the assemblage, it would drive the diversity down. So that would make sense why we would see a positive there, but a negative in the richness. So after four sampling events, the numbers seem to be trending with levels of septic system density. I, I, my, my sewer creeks and my wastewater treatment plant creeks were much nastier than my, my rural creeks that didn't really have anything near them. Now Rocky Creek, which was determined to have low septic tank density, uh, it had a pretty average water quality, but I would collect the most number of macroinvertebrates there, the biggest ones, the healthiest looking ones would come out of that creek. So it just really threw us for a loop that it would have um, kind of middle of the pack water quality for such a healthy stream bug wise. Curry Creek had the most impaired water quality, the one that flows through downtown Jefferson, right through the sewer. Um, it had low richness, low diversity, just all around bad numbers the whole time. 
Another interesting one was one of our other low septic tank density creeks, Little Bear. It had the fewest numbers of macros collected out of all the creeks, but when I talked to one of the landowners that lived there, he said that the floodwaters that come through are pretty large. And so what I'm thinking is that these large flood pulses could be contributing to macroinvertebrate drift and really just washing the bugs downstream from where I couldn't get them. So it may not be as much a pollution issue, it's just they're not there because they drifted away. So in conclusion, um, it's a very unique watershed. There's a lot of diverse land usage, a lot of factors affecting water quality. So you're gonna have some interesting numbers, but using those covariance correlations, uh, we determined that septic tank density did have a slight hindering effect on the water quality in the watershed. And likewise, those same values showed a decreasing water quality and a decrease in macroinvertebrate diversity with increases in septic tank density. So that was good to see. These are uh, my references that I used. These are the credits for the photographs that I used of the different, um, all the creek photos I took myself, but all the um, pictures of the bugs I had to get offline. And that's, uh, that's it, guys. Thank you for um, coming and thank you for um, listening today and I'll open it up for questions.